What's up, family and friends? Good afternoon. And welcome to this live broadcast. Where we feel free to share knowledge. Very important. Very important. So today, I'm speaking on what I titled Speak for Yourself. It is very important you speak to us uh, for yourself. Speak for yourself in every issue. The best way to speak for yourself is speaking what you know, not what you believe. When you're speaking what you believe, you are not speaking for yourself. But when you're speaking what you know, you are speaking for yourself. Let me give you some examples. When you come in marriage, like church marriage or church wedding, you see the couple, they don't speak for themselves. The people getting married, they don't speak for themselves. Uh, let, let me say a little bit about our own uh, Igbo traditional um, rights or marriage. You see, in most cases, unless they have changed them now, the mother of the woman that you're marrying won't be there, and the woman won't be there when they're discussing about her bride price and all that. Maybe they call her to come in, okay, do you accept this young man? He came to marry you, she will say, I do, it's okay, this okay, go back. She don't have a say in whatever they are say, do, saying. Whatever list they give to that young man, that's what the young man will do, whether he likes it or not. Unless he don't want to marry you, then he, he has to leave. But many people are changing all that. So in church wedding or Christian marriage, the couple don't say a thing. I mean, they don't say what is in their mind or what they want to do is what they please read. All they have to do to say is, I do. Have you had any couple uh, in, in the church marriage or wedding that say they don't do? Because they're just, it's just a concert. You know, they get her to, to do drama and after they said, I don't want any drama in my marriage or, uh, excuse me, how about that one you have in the church? That's a big dr uh, drama. It's a concert, people sit around and some people begin to perform. You also join to perform. People gather. Then they read something. Call your name. Do you accept this man or this woman as your lovely wedded wife or husband for better, for worse, in, in sickness and health, till death do, do your part? You say, I do. You never speak for yourself. Of course, you practice that even before coming. You know you, you must say, I do. You are not speaking for yourself. Somebody tell you you are, you are joining with somebody for better, for worse. You say you do. In sickness, in health, you say you do. No, you are stupid to say you do for that. It's supposed to be in health and in wealth. <laughs> no, not in, in sickness and in health. Oh, no, it's in health. Who tell you it's not possible to be in health and in wealth? Who tell you that? Religion tell you, no, you know, life is up, up and down. God, yeah, God make life up and down, huh? No, life is not up and down. Marriage is not up and down. Marriage is not university. Marriage is not school where you go to learn. No. And when you ask people who are they marriage? Religious people say they are God or their marriage. No God or their marriage. It is people that or their marriage. And that's why you see people have their different ways of engaging in it. Marriage is not a natural thing too. Marriage is not a natural thing. Man made not marriage. Marriage is not a must. Take it from me. A man and a woman can decide to have children without getting married. You know that marriage they are talking about. That's crap. 
But they tell you God owed them marriage because they found it in their religious book. A man who will leave his father and his mother and cleave to his wife. Uh, have you seen any man, any Christian man that leave his father and his mother and cleave to his wife? No. They cleave to their father and mother, they cleave to their wife, they cleave to everybody. Until they find out. <laughs> they tell you, oh, okay, I, I, I left my father and mother to cleave to my uh, wife. When something happened, you find out they never left. They are still boys claiming to be men because they believe God or them marriage. No God or them marriage. It is people that owe them marriage. And the people have their rules guiding their own marriage for good. For good. Because no people will make rules or laws against themselves. They will, they will always make rules and laws against the intruders, against strangers, but not themselves. The rules and the laws they make is for them, for themselves, to enjoy whatever thing they instituted. So, a marriage is supposed to be the couple who are saying, speaking for themselves. Not somebody reading something or something that somebody wrote many years ago and you accepting it and the reason why you are accepting it is because you are a member of that organization you are a member of that church you are a member of that court you are not yourself when you belong to any group you are not allowed to speak for yourself you are not allowed to speak your mind no it is the whatever the group agrees to that's why we speak a group cannot send you somewhere and you say you are going to say what you want no you say what they want you to say and they wait for a feedback when you come back they say okay tell us what happened when you say that what happened they want to know what happened another example i want to give you is quoting the written what is written you see some people they quote the bible the bible says now when you quote the bible you are not speaking for yourself anyone that is quoting the bible is not quoting any proof you are quoting a claim bible is a claim bible is not a proof you cannot use bible to prove anything exists you cannot use the bible to prove that god exists you cannot use the bible to prove you are saying the truth or if you are quoting the bible then somebody say no what you are quoting is not in the bible you say okay let me prove it now you see it's in the bible which uh, Christians always run against when you point them to what the Bible says. They say you are taking it out of context or you are not taking it by faith. Like you tell them that the Bible says you should love your enemies and hate your family. They say it's not true. No, you mean put God first. Number one, the God you are putting first must be an idol. If God exists, you don't need to put God first. God himself, we put himself where he's supposed to be. A God they are telling you to put God first. Make God, put God first in your marriage. Put God first in your relationship. Put God first in your business. Put God first in this and that. It's people like you that are still telling you all that bullshit. Not any God. Have you seen any God that come and tell you, put me first? Any God that asks you to put me first is useless. Because God don't supposed to ask any human being to do anything for it. If that God exists. But that God is not real. That's why people are the one making up those words. You know, attributing it to God. That one um, hustling and attributing their sources to God. Them attributing their failure to Satan. Both entities or both beings they never, they never see. So you don't you are not speaking for yourself when you are quoting the Bible, when you are preaching from the Bible, when you are teaching from the Bible, you are not speaking for yourself. You are speaking hearsay. What you heard somebody else said, then you are preaching it. It's not yourself. You are not speaking what you know. You are speaking what you believe. You only believe the Bible. You don't know the Bible. That's why you cannot tell the date. You say God created heaven and earth. That's why you cannot tell the date Jesus died for you on the cross. That's why you cannot tell the date Jesus was born. You cannot tell the date Jesus rose again from the dead. From the dead. You can never because you can never know those things because they are hearsay. They never happen. 
You say no because it happened many years, blah, blah, blah. Okay, but you say God is alive and Jesus is alive. So if God is alive and Jesus is alive, in other, in other means they exist, then they're supposed to tell you the actual date. You're not supposed to be in oblivion. You're not supposed to be in, in the dark. You're not supposed to be ignorant of those dates. I always use uh, Jeremiah chapter 20, uh, 33 verse 3 as as a challenge to Christians, you don't supposed to be ignorant of anything because God said, call to me, I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you know not. So there's no excuse for your ignorance. There's no excuse. You don't tell me there is a mystery. No, it's not. Because even in Luke chapter 14, Jesus said, there is no more mystery. He said, and everything hidden will be revealed. What he spoke to you in the in the in the in the darkness, he said, make it open in the light. So there is no reason for you to say it's a mystery. Don't tell me the message of your cross is mystery to unbelievers. No, it's not. You're supposed to make it known. You're supposed to reveal it. If you cannot reveal it, you are God supposed to reveal it to you. So if you cannot tell me the date you were you were created, God supposed to reveal it to you. And if God cannot reveal it to you, that means you are just a believer without proof. You believe something without proof. You believe God created you without proof. Somebody told you that God created you. But that person did not give you the date. And somebody told you that, that, that you were born. But some that person give you the date. Your parents told you when you were born. Let's say your parents are dead. Maybe when you were born, you are dead. Somebody told you your parents gave birth to you. That person gave you your birthday. Unless you made up one. But you're supposed to know when you were born. Just as you're supposed to know when you were created. But because you God, know God created you, you are not a creature. They cannot give you that date. Tell your pastor or anyone you know, say, I say so. If they believe that God created you, ask them which date did God create you. It's supposed to have your creation date. But because creation is hearsay, it's a myth, it's not the truth, it's not a fact. That's why you see people claiming they were created or God created them. Somebody said to me, the proof of the uh, 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 of of god uh, of the existence of god is the creation that's stupidity you know not, if god if, if the creation is the evidence of god's existence then that god is dead if you cannot see that god now you say no god is a spirit that's why i cannot see a spirit cannot create something you can see fact a spirit creates spiritual things but because that spirit does not exist and that spirit cannot create anything you can see. You cannot see that spirit. You can also not see anything that spirit create, uh, cre uh, created or can create. If you say that spirit, that God is a spirit, that's why you cannot see God. Why do you believe that creation is the evidence of that God? No. Creation is evidence of people that have gone ahead of us. That's why I keep the, they say, who created heaven? I said, our ancestors. They say your ancestors are dead. Yes, that's why I cannot see them. But I am one with my ancestors. The same blood flows in me. The same my ancestors' blood flow in me. They are, they are not imaginary beings. They are part of me. They live. They existed. So it's not a hearsay. When I'm talking about my ancestors, I'm not talking about hearsay. Yes, I have the same blood with them. Their blood is in me and blood speaks. Blood speaks. Blood is thicker than anything you can think of. So when, when you said uh, this is what the Bible say, you are not saying the truth. You are saying hearsay. You are not saying what you believe. You are not speaking for yourself. You are speaking for your religion. You are speaking for whoever gave you that Bible. You are speaking for whoever wrote that Bible. You are quoting somebody else. It's not your words. So, but you're supposed to speak for yourself. Like uh, last Wednesday, I was sitting in a park. A branch of the tree, a dry branch of a tree, and fell just few inches away from where I, 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 I was sitting the sound make me shouted and the, the guy be, the guy like uh, 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 sitting far from me also all of them shouted and they, look at that I said wow 
<laughs> what religious people will call miracle, right? Okay. Okay, who, who saved me from that? You, the same God you want to punish me, the same God I say, fuck God. You mean that same God saved me? Because I was, yeah, God is giving you time to repent. Fuck that. God is not giving me any time to repent. I don't need repentance because I do research. When I do research, I can speak for myself. That's why I, I have to prove whatever I research, whatever I found. I have to prove it, not just believe it. I have proven that no God created me. But a God and Goddess created me or gave back to me. I use that created or great because people believe they were created. No, none of us we are created, we were born. My parents gave back to me. I prove it by having also my own child. I have uh, I, I have I had a woman, then we have uh, we have sex, and that's how we have our child. It is not any God that gave us any child. It is not any God that gave us children. It's not any God that can give you any child. It's not any God that can give you children. No God can do that. It is always man and woman. You have to speak for yourself. When I say a man and a woman can have life, can give life, I am speaking out of what I know. I'm speaking for myself. When I say I am a father, I'm speaking for myself. When a reverend father says he's a reverend father, he's not. He's not speaking for himself. He's speaking what Roman Catholic doctrine made him, what faith made him. Because faith makes you what you are not. Faith makes you a fake person. Reverend fathers are fake fathers. They are not real fathers. They don't have any father. Spiritual fathers are fake fathers. They are not real. They are fake. Somebody you don't know say I'm your father. No, you're not. Every child that have a father must know his father, unless his father is dead. But somebody is claiming to be your father is not the truth. So, you have to speak for yourself in everything. Imagine uh, a child approach to you and call your name. You don't know this child from anywhere. But this child call your name and say, my father said uh, he has a message for you, come. You say, who is your father? They say, my father is Christian faith. You don't know who is Christian faith, you know. Maybe you know the person, but you never know the person with that name. You say, my father is a Christian faith. You say, okay, okay, let me believe you. Let me go and verify who is your father. You have to verify. You don't just follow the child because the child says so. But, for example, you are, you are in a place where you are looking for direction. Then a child approach to you and tell you, my father. He mentioned and then say, my father wants to see you. He has a message for you. Then you went. Before even the child said, this is my father. You saw the man sitting there. You is the man you know, but you don't know him as a name. I said, oh, you are my brother. And your, your child was speaking English to me, telling me Christian faith, want to see me. I don't know you by that name. He said, yeah, that's the name they know me here. Yeah, I live here, blah, blah, blah. Because you know the man. You, you don't even need that child to spend anything to you. This is the person you know very well. Another arm. If you don't know the man, he, the child show you as his or her father. What are you supposed to do? You say, please, can I know you? How do you know my name? This child came up and tell me, uh, call my name and tell me uh, his or her father, you know, who have a message for me. How do you want to verify? Because you can't open up to somebody you don't know. The same thing goes with relationship. When you say you have friends, oh, you don't gossip, you don't do that, blah, 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 blah. Whatever you tell your friends is secret, they will not gossip. You are joking. Speak for yourself. Your friend can be friend. I mean, your best friend can betray you. Your best friend can sell you out. But you say, I know her, I know him. No, I trust him now. Some of you see some uh, some, some of you, you your relationship is ruined because of uh, a, a guy did not buy flower or your husband did not buy flower. What are you doing with flower? You let him buy you newspaper, not flower. You don't need flowers. You need newspapers more than flowers. You need better things. But you see something that is not even part of us causing problem to us. 
Religion is not part of us, it's causing problem to us. Flower is not part of us, it's causing problem to us. Flower somebody plucked from somewhere or made from somewhere and begin to sell it. It's not even part of nature anymore and it's causing problem in our relationship in, in life. You have to speak for yourself. Stop speaking hearsay. If you're speaking hearsay, take it as hearsay. Don't take it as the truth. Whether you hear that in the dream, in revelation, in vision, you have to prove it yourself. If you cannot prove it yourself, don't sell it. If you cannot use it yourself, don't sell it. If you have not seen that God, if you have not seen that Jesus, why are you telling people you have seen Jesus? Or you know the God or Jesus you preach? You don't know. You don't. So stop lying to yourself and tell yourself the honest truth. Speak for yourself. When you speak for yourself, you will see you are speaking the truth. Even when they come against you, they will not succeed. Somebody speaking against you, trashing you, you stand your ground and beat that person up because you are speaking for yourself. That person may be judging you by your past or whatever, which that person have no true information or, or, or um, absolute information about. You can stand and trash that person. But when you don't know what you are saying, when you are not speaking for yourself, of course, anyone can intimidate you. Anyone can tell. That's why you see pastors intimidating their, their ignorant followers. You see them intimidating those people that are believers. No one can intimidate me with the Bible, with God, no, with cause, with threat, with threats. No, no. Because I know what I'm saying. If I am quoting, I will tell you I'm quoting. But when I'm speaking, I speak what I know. I don't talk what I don't know. I don't talk what I believe. I speak what I know. And when we speak what we know, we do that with all boldness, without fear or favor. We are not the one that's supposed to be running from the attackers. Rather, the attackers are supposed to be the one running from us. Let them know that when they kick against you, it, they will not, even if they can beat you, but they will never repeat it again. That struggle will never leave their memory anytime soon. So for them to know that you know who you are and you know what you are speaking, you ought to speak for yourself. Stop speaking for the Bible. Stop speaking for Christianity. Stop speaking for Islam. Stop speaking for Judaism. Stop speaking for religion. Speak for yourself. Stop speaking for God you have not seen and cannot see. Stop speaking for Jesus. Speak for yourself. And when it comes to, uh, to, to, to relationship, it is very important. Don't think that people or anyone in relationship with you know you. They don't know you. But you have that, uh, that, 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 that duty to make yourself known to them. Speak for yourself. Not for what you believe, but for what you know. Peace.